Hello, I'm Jashana Jones. I'm the next speaker, and I'm here to talk about engineering. Okay, so I have a specific, specific field of engineering, which is manufacturing. Um, a lot of people don't know manufacturing is taking people, um, machinery, and raw materials, processing them, and then making them to a final product. So it's a very specific part of engineering. Um, the manufacturing industry. I work in the manufacturing industry. Um, in the United States, there are very different parts, several parts of manufacturing injury, the industry. I specifically work in the transportation industry, which is making products that go into vehicles like airplanes, aerospace is a very common industry. And then cars, um, boats, vehicles, there's always parts that need to be made for that. So um, what I do is I do manufacturing processes, and then here's a small picture of what manufacturing processes is. Um, there's two types of processes. There's processing operations, and then there's assembly. Um, where I worked, um, we did both. We did processing. So we didn't do heat treating and shaping, but we did do a lot of the coating, the cleaning, and we did the final welding and um, assembly of putting in thread fasteners. Um, what my specialty is, is computer-aided drafting, um, computer-aided design. So what I do personally is I come in and they have this drawing that they make out, um, or they'll give me an actual model with no drawing, and I have to create the drawing myself. So I put all the dimensions on, all the specifications um, of what each surface and what each part needs. Um, GD&T is actually like, if you can see the small symbols, like um, at the top, there is a double circle and that's concentricity. Um, so they have to be concentric, both of those sides of the ends, they have to be like in the same space in the middle. And we use different software to do that. Some of the software we use is AutoCAD or SolidWorks. Um, there's a lot of different software that you can use to create these models and these drawings. Next slide. Um, I also do computer aided manufacturing, which is very, very cool. Um, here, um, they are cutting out a piece of what looks like to go into a part of a turbine in a gear. So what I do is I work with a special software called Mastercam. And after I have this 3D model, I come in, um, I will put whatever process needs to be um, placed on there. Like if it's a solid block, we need to cut the outside out. So I'll put a pattern on the outside to cut the outside out. And this software will create what's called a G code, which is the code that we insert into the machinery. So the machinery can do it itself. And you create the G code and the machinery will actually cut it out afterwards. So you can see like the process um, and the after process of this. And like I say, the machinery, we have different machines, um, lathes, mills, a lathe is like a side mill that you, that you use that goes around it. A end mill is vertical typically, or it can be also a side where it will cut different parts of the metal out. Um, and like I said, there's different software. Mastercam is one of the popular software. Uh, there's also Hughescam and I believe Katia also that also create G-codes. Next slide, please. Um, my journey into STEM, I wasn't introduced into STEM until high school. Um, I was a part of the, the um, my journey into STEM, I wasn't introduced into STEM until high school. Um, I was a part of the VEX Robotics Challenge. Um, if you can see the bottom picture, that's a VEX robot. It's basically um, pieces of machinery that you put together and you create a solid body. And then on top of that solid body, yeah, go Vex, go first. <laughs> you create um, different articulation, which is like that little arm, the little um, rollers, which they would actually use to like typically have balls go up so they can collect balls. Um, from Vex, I got into the first robotics challenge. Um, that's actually my team, um, team 687. I was part of Nerd Herd. And there we actually did not just create a whole robot, we created a whole, um, I guess a paper, what we would call in um, 
we'd call that in college a design process and um, final design paperwork. So we create how we went through the process um, of creating it, this product, all the CAD work we did, all the coding we did, and also um, all the fundraising we did to get the funds because they can be a little bit expensive to put together. So you need fundraisers. So um, we put together the paperwork and we actually passed it out to other teams to show how they would do that. Um, we called it introduction to entrepreneurship actually. So um, we weren't just being engineers, we were also entrepreneuring. We were creating this team and this process to have funding to be able to go to different competitions because there's a lot of competitions and scholarships. Um, it was very, very fun and I enjoyed it. And, I got to learn about both sides of the process, parts of the building, parts of the coding, parts of the, how do we get enough money to make these parts? Because like I say, they're very expensive and sometimes we, schools can only fund so much. So we have to learn how to gather funds. Um, next slide, please. Um, I've always been the only girl in the room in most of my classes, except when I was in college and I had my friends and I got to be in their class with them. Um, an important quote that I always thought of was, I was taught that the way of progress was neither swift or easy. Um, this is by Marie Curie. She won actually two Nobel Peace Prizes in science. Um, for women in STEM, it's not going to be easy. You're going to, you might be the only woman there, but you're there because you enjoy it also. And because we're making progress as women um, going into new fields, um, is it, even as a professional, I'm usually the only woman um, in my department or the only woman in my company, actually. <laughs> I've had that several times where I was the only woman in my company and people were surprised. But I was there because I enjoyed it. And after they saw what good job I did and, you know, they saw that there was women out here who enjoy this, who want to do this, they actually started reaching out more. Um, more recently for my company, I worked with they didn't have any women in their apprenticeship program. Um, after I came in and I talked to them like, why don't you have girls come in and see what they're doing? They actually started getting girls from the local high school to come in and tour and um, shadow some of the CNC workers, shadow me, shadow some of the people in quality so they can introduce more girls to this program because it's important that um, we have equality with our apprenticeships because girls should be introduced to this as much as boys. Um, like I said, it's important. You might be the only woman there still in 2021, but as long as you enjoy what you're doing and you have that thirst for knowledge, you'll go far. Next slide, please. There's so many benefits to stand. Um, one of the first ones is problem solving. When you have the mindset of someone in STEM, you're always looking for a solution and it, it won't shut down no matter what you're doing. Um, when I'm at home and I'm looking for a solution of how to do things, how to organize things, my mind gets set in my STEM thinking and my, um, my what is it, continuous improvement mindset where I'm always looking for a better solution. Um, that goes with you. You don't just take it into work, you take it everywhere. Um, like I say, it brings in more creativity a lot of the times when you are in STEM, you might not be doing something new, but you might be making a small improvement or a process. And like I say, you don't just take that into work, you take that home. Um, I actually, at home, I introduced a new process with my landlord about how we can fix things in our laundry room. Um, and he was surprised that I introduced that process to him, but he wasn't thinking, he had never thought about how it could be improved because most people think, oh, if this is the way I'm doing it, this is the way it's working. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. And it's true, if there's nothing wrong with it, you don't necessarily have to fix it, but you can always improve. And that's one of the benefits of STEM. It changes your mindset once you're introduced and once you start learning, you're always more curious. You're always trying to find a way to fix things and do things better. Um, next slide, please. Um, like I said, the STEM mindset, um, there's the fixed mindset where you're thinking that you have this box and you have to stay in this box and everything that you do is a box. And then there's a growth mindset where you always want to learn. You always want to like develop something new. You're always trying to be new and you may fail, but that failure is helping you to get to the next step. So um, what we call the STEM mindset, the growth mindset actually, and 
we want to encourage people to always be thinking of more things, um, like I said, not just in STEM, but in life.